In bowling, our obstacles are invisible. We can't see the oil on the lane or how much there is. So we have to rely on our ball's motion to give us great feedback on how to play the lanes that day. The number one thing you want to look for is distance. How far is that ball traveling down the lane before it hooks? The second thing is the hook power. On the back end, the last 15 feet, how much or how little is that ball hooking? And then thirdly is the shape, which is the overall combination of the distance and the hook power. And then we want you to be able to play all three parts of the lane and be able to match up the shape of your shot to the lane condition that day. Fred, Jerry, and Chris Barnes are going to discuss this in more detail, and Chris is going to throw some great shots to show you what we mean. And please remember to always see your local USBC certified coach. So we just outlined the five adjustments and how you're going to start practicing and reading the book, uh, watching the CD or video, whichever format you're using. Uh, how do you know when to use those? First thing we say a lot of times is, is watch your ball. You know, watch your ball reaction as it goes down the lane. What do we mean by that? What are you watching? I think the first order of business, uh, first order of business, get this in your mind, get it in your brain, the first order of business is watching the distance. Chris, I know that's your first topic. We talk about it a lot. Absolutely, and by distance we're talking about break point, and break point is when the ball starts to pick up a roll. Lots of times people talk about the ball hooks too much. It's actually not hooking too much, it's hooking too early. And then the same thing goes for when they say it's not hooking enough. It's actually going too long. Uh, the number one important thing for me on tour is to be able to control my break point on a consistent basis. So when we talk about the distance the ball travels, if we heard what Chris had to say, is distance number one, it either skids too far or it hooks too early, or it hooks right at that proper point. Somewhere, say, between 35 and 45 feet depends on your game and where you want to see that ball break. Chris will uh, throw three different shots. As you can see here, this ball's grabbing the lane too early. It grabbed in the midsection of the lane. It took off left of the head pin. That's too early. Now, on this shot here, you see that this ball is going down the lane too long. It just whiffed the head pin right. That's distance. It went too long. It never got into the roll. Therefore, it can't make the turn back to the pocket. Now, on this shot, you're going to see that we have that shot in between the two, and that's what Chris just dialed up, a shot in between, the one that grabbed too early, the one that went too long, now he's just looking for that shape and that distance as it goes down the lane. There it is, perfect break point right into the pocket. So number one is distance, and now we talk about topic number two, Coach. Well, that's hook power, and that is one of three things will happen. It'll either hook a lot and hard and be real snappy off of the break point, or it'll be a medium kind of pattern, or it might go really soft and not hardly hook at all. So you're looking for what the ball is doing in the last 15, 20 feet on the lane, and that is what the hook power is. In this series of shots, we're gonna be watching Chris and paying attention to the hook power. That's how much the ball hooks in the back part of the lane, the last 15 or 20 feet. As you can see on this shot, Chris's ball changes directions dramatically, and you have a big hook power. In this shot, Chris delivers the ball, the ball goes down the lane, and as it gets to the last 15, 20 feet, the ball doesn't change directions very much. You can see it's a little hook power. In this delivery, Chris lets go of the ball, it goes down the lane, and you can see that it is in between the first one and the second one. You get a very nice, even, smooth reaction in the back with a medium kind of hook power. So we have distance number one, hook power number two. We're going to talk about this a lot and what are the variables and how do you control distance? How do you, how do you increase your hook power? How do you decrease your hook power? But before we do that, we look at the distance, we look at the hook power, we try the three sections of the lanes. We play outside and then we play in the track and we play inside and we play the three sections. Chris now is going to throw a shot from deep inside and watch, he's going to stand left to center, throw the inside shot, it's going to arc out, come back to the pocket, as you can see, through a perfect strike playing inside. Sometimes that's the best angle, but then sometimes we want to play on the outside line. So let's watch Chris now. He's going to go up the outside of the lane. He's going to go up the lane a little more speed, a little straighter ball, a ball that don't hook as much. He's going to try to take his hand out of the shot and just throw it straighter up the lane. As you can see there, that's a much straighter shot. 
Then we have that track area. That's where everybody tries to play every day, and Chris will show that track area. Sometimes it plays, sometimes it don't. As you can see here, he's just a little left of center, and he's arcing the ball right in the track, just a slight hook out right back to the pocket. There you have it, the three sections of the lane, and that's your goal to be able to play all three areas. So now you're starting to see what the lane's doing side to side as well as the distance and the hook power. Chris, it's something to use all the time. <laughs> yeah, and you know now that we've got distance, we've got hook power, we have the three areas of the lane kind of mapped out. Now we can just start to figure out the shape that we're going to use to strike this as much as we can. Don't get too comfortable because that might change. In fact, it probably will. In a three-game set of your league or in a six-game block, those lanes will not normally stay the same. So you better be ready to move and use those adjustments. On tour, the most important day of the week for me is practice day. This is when I check out those three areas of the lane. I start putting together my package of adjustments. And if I make the right decision on that day, most of the time that ends up being a pretty good week for me. And you know, Chris, we use the numbers game. We've used it for years now, the numbers game being 10. We put a number on the lane or hook power, what the lanes are doing. Let's say the lane's hooking very little. That'd be a one or a two, no hook. If it's real dry and really hooking hard, that would be a number nine or 10. So we equate, what are the lanes doing? Let's say the lane were five, then you're five. We use our medium ball, medium loft, medium speed, medium hand position, medium wrist action. So five on the lanes, we're five. Now, if the lanes are real slick, then you're going to be eight. You're really going to be getting a handful, which you can do all the right. time. I have a little problem with that. I know you can do that. You can put that 10 combination every time. I think you get the point. If the lanes are real dry and they're hooking real hard, you want to sort of miss your hand. Your hand does very little to the ball at the bottom of the swing. We'll talk about that a lot in the release, but let's look at 10. We're going to play those angles. We're going to check the lane. Practice day, you're saying, hey, I may use this release or that release. This pressure, that pressure, boy, it's a total combination of all the adjustments. I think you're getting the idea, and now you're well on your way to starting to play the different angles and do the different adjustments.